Hi, it's Janos, it's Reverd Audio, and uh, the past couple of weeks I've been making like a tremendous amount of videos, answering like a boatload of comments and emails, and uh, I really overdid it, and <laughs> now it's time to catch up with my life. So now the past couple of days I haven't posted any videos, and... Uh, haven't had time to sit next to a computer to work on the channel at all and that's because uh, you know that's how life is you have to balance things out and uh, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, everyone is so active and so many things going on and I really love to uh, answer all the comments right away I have lots of things to share about it and but I can't so now what I'm trying is to make a, it's my time today is Sunday evening and I'm trying to make a couple videos for the next week because that's how I make my videos. I make take a um, time and then I make them back to back, a couple of them, and then I upload them and schedule them so they come out when they come out and I do not have time to review them, edit them, edit the sound and, and things like that. No, this is just my minimum time and that's it. That's what you guys are getting. I'm not a YouTuber, I'm an audiophile, I have a life. <laughs> so, and I'm trying to just, you know, give as much of myself to this channel as possible. And sometimes uh, that's, uh, you get what you get. So now, yesterday, uh, I've been to the symphony with Nelly and uh, we have watched something very interesting. So here, the, the the symphony, they are doing these things when they show a movie, a classic movie, and instead of the soundtrack uh, played by the movie score, there's the orchestra, the live orchestra, playing the music in the background. So they've been doing this with Star Wars and, and some of the Harry Potter movies, and uh, when they do that, we just go with Nelly and, and watch it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's even more fun than just watching a, a movie in the, in the movie theater. When you have the live musicians playing the score, the sound is just uh, a couple notches higher than what you are used to. So now I want to share a little bit more on that because we were thinking and, and talking with Nelly about what we heard, how, how the sound was yesterday night. Uh, and, uh, and as you know, uh, I am, <laughs> maybe we could say foremost, I am an audiophile, but I am not just an audiophile, I am also a music lover, and, uh, and I have friends who are musicians, uh, they would say that my hearing is like a musician, not like an audiophile, but uh, so so I'm also my ears are tuned to notice things that musicians notice, and and for me, the main thing, the number one that has to be in the sound is that those things that musicians notice, they have to match up, and then what audiophiles notice, are they matching up? Let's find out, and. Uh, we can find it out because Nelly, she is first and foremost a musician. So she has a, a trained uh, musician background. She uh, played uh, double bass in a, in a pop band. And uh, then she moved to another town and they got a replacement a double bass player. And, and the band got famous in Japan. But Nelly, she was their first uh, bass player in that group. So she is pretty decent, I would say, with the double bass, but she also plays, or I would say played the cello, because now she doesn't have one, but uh, she learned from Balogh Chaba, and those who don't know who Balogh Chaba is or was, because sadly a few years ago he has passed away, he was Janos Starker's lead student. So he was the head of Janos Starker's school. And that was Nelly's teacher, so that's her musician background. So, so now you can appreciate that I had a dialogue with someone who is a musician and living with 
over 20 years with an audiophile and she has been coming to all the audio club meetings and uh, she has been accepted by the audiophile community as quite likely the best golden ear and um, because frankly she just shames all the guys with, with her hearing and what she can notice uh, in the sound and yesterday uh, we were talking about what we heard because it was a mixture of the live orchestra playing plus they also used the sound system in the concert hall to render the dialogue that the uh, characters, the movie characters were talking plus the special effects came from a stereo system and uh, and actually we both of us could hear very clearly when the musicians played and what was coming from the stereo it was really night and day and there was a kind of a, a clash on that and, uh, and and we could hear that the sound system was insufficient for the venue for the concert hall is that even though it was pretty loud and the bass was pretty deep but uh, the it, it could not take the the dynamic peaks there was a lot of clipping going on and by the end both of our ears had fatigue because of that stereo system and the interesting thing is that people always think that uh, you need the most power for the bass to reproduce the bass but uh, you guys are wrong of course bass needs a lot of power but what uh, fatigue does and where the compression and the limitation of the sound system in the concert hall was most noticeable was in the high frequencies and uh, uh, it could it was like really really audibly clipping uh, quite badly sometimes at the highs and all the highs were like really limited in the dynamic range and as the frequency range dropped then the uh, limitations of the sound system became less and less apparent. They, they were failing less and less. So that's one very big warning for all of you that if you are multi-amping your, your speakers, then don't think that you throw like, let's say like 100 watts on your woofer and 10 watts on your treater and you will be fine, no. You need also a 100 watts amplifier for your tweeter to avoid compression in the high frequencies because whenever there's a compression there, there's a clipping there, then it's, it's much, much more audible than when it's happening in the bass. And that's because the brain, 90% of the processing power is in the mid-range and high frequencies because that's how we uh, navigate in 3D space by using the high frequency signals as cues to locate the three-dimensional position of an object. And if there's a tiny, tiny distortion there, then it will tell your ear that the position of the object has shifted. And, and if, uh, if the stereo system does some distortions that, that in real life do not occur, then it tells your, it, your brain is unable to calculate the exact 3D location of the sound source and you get fatigue. So that's why we are getting fatigue, not because the ear is getting tired, it's because the brain is getting tired and then as a response it's shutting down the ear because it's getting garbage as an input and it has to shut down the garbage input to be able to make meaningful calculations so that's why uh, after like being object or subjected to uh, a lot of high frequency distortion that's why our ears shuts down to protect the brain and to be able to navigate in a 3d space because uh, evolutionary when you are unable to localize where uh, some a sound is coming from that's the recipe of getting eaten by a lion right or, or falling down a crevice and dying there. So it is really a survival reflex. Uh, so what else? So why did I start making this video? And I started because Nelly said something that every audiophile should listen to because what she said is being neglected by the entire audiophile community as a whole. 
and it's where the whole audiophile community goes down like we are kind of like uh, falling off a cliff and diving to our doom as far as sound quality is going with reproduction and and i have been noticing this as a trend especially the past 20 20 years or so is that uh, the audiophile world is getting is turning into a uh, <laughs> into a highly specialized universe that has no relationship with, with live sound anymore. How it sounds real life. It does sound audiophile, it has tremendous details, it is very catchy. It, it's a very powerful visual auditory universe. However, it is very far from natural sound. And that's what Nelly told me as a musician, as an observation that uh, when she was listening to the orchestra playing the live orchestra in the concert hall she said it doesn't sound anything at all like audiophile sound does it has nothing to do with audiophile sound it has colorations in it it has um, it has a personality to it it's not neutral it's not flat it's not boring it's not analytical nothing to do with that so i think that that's something really really important that uh, when we are thinking about sound that when you are at a concert hall it's anything but audiophile and if you are building an audiophile system to me audiophile systems have a they, they sound to me almost like a PA system that is designed to give back the sound of a, of a of a really bad but specialized acoustic space. Something highly unnatural. Yeah, it can be highly resolving, highly detailed, but but it's not not what you have in in real life. Uh, and I mean in real life, like a symphonic concert or or, or someone whipping up a guitar and playing for you and um, yeah so I don't know what you guys feel um, and but when you when you think about what's going on in a studio I know that I'm going to get answers that I work in a recording studio and that's not how it sounds at all in a studio and I can say to you that I believe you and I'm pretty sure it doesn't sound like that in your studio but it's not true for 99% of the recording studios worldwide. Most of the stuff that's coming out that we are listening to, it's so manufactured, it's so artificial, and it has so little to do with how acoustic instruments sound in the real world that, that I'm. it really makes me literally cry. And uh, I think that's it for now. And, uh, and if that's not the case and, and you happen to work in a studio that reproduces sound naturally, then please comment and also give me the studio's name so that people know that what to look for, that okay, there is this recording studio who doesn't do what almost everyone does. And I think that that's a really worthy goal uh, to to look for such treasures because these are treasures so thank you for listening to my banter and uh, i'm going to have a follow-up for this video it's coming up right tomorrow so please like subscribe have an awesome day bye bye